terms of the specific question, um, each bank has its own issues. Um, it depends on the banks and how important shipping is relative to that bank. And I think, in general terms, the list which Marcus produced, if you go down that list, you would probably find maybe a quarter or less than a quarter third uh, in between that range who are still either considering lending. Okay? So most of them, it depends on the sector in which they've lent to. So if you look at the, the far left-hand side of that chart originally, um, a lot of the German banks were obviously heavily in the container market. Now, as we all know, the container market is, is, is very depressed, and therefore they are reviewing and looking at those transactions and being uh, distracted by that, with those problems internally. Now, in terms of how long that takes, and obviously when the container market improves, then their own portfolios will improve and they'll be confident to lend more. Um, it doesn't say that these the other German banks aren't lending, but it just means that the appetite will be less if you're dealing with problems. It's very difficult to lend more. Um, so on that specific point, I think another couple of years, so it's linked to the container market where the, he the heavy amount of um, liquidity may come back. But that is specific to each of those banks. Um, the limitation, I think, on the wider sense of each of the banks in terms of the losses, the asset rights off outside the shipping market, we've seen over the last two years been pretty heavy. So on a general point, banks are making money again, um, and therefore that will then breed confidence going forward in order to maybe come back into the market uh, over the next couple of years. So that's, that's the point I'd make, a couple of years. Uh, Nigel, would you like to add on um, um, how long will the focus of the banks be on damage limitation? Well, fortunately, we don't have any damage limitation, so I'm probably counter-cyclical, which I like be. Um, you know, we have a strategy of very much based around Middle East, Asia, Africa. It stood the bank in very good state. We're very well capitalized. We turned to shipping finance. As most of you know, we started at the end of 2007. So we were basically probably coming in at the end of a very hot market and did very little business, quite frankly. So in today's market, we are certainly um, very popular. Um, we think there are very good opportunities. I think some of my, you know, I talk to a lot of banks, it's part of my job, and certain banks do have problems, but they tend to now set up teams to deal with those problems, and I'm seeing banks coming back into this market. Now, we have to look at this also on a regional basis. You know, in Asia, there's a lot of activity going on right now between the banks. Um, there's been a lot of talk last year about China. China supported its ship industry, and it supported customers who were buying ships from Chinese uh, shipping companies. I can see more of that happening. I can see the Chinese banks expanding more and more over the border. I know my colleagues in Hong Kong are now seeing Chinese banks being very active in Hong Kong. That will continue, in my opinion. I think you know, we feel that uh, it's a very good time to be in shipping. Now, you, there was a big list that Marcus put up of all the requirements for a good shipping loan. Those have always been the requirements for a good shipping loan, let's be honest. Uh, you're missing the pint of blood as well in there, but I mean, you know, our credit department will probably give you 20 more lists. But a good shipping loan is a well-structured transaction, and maybe in the boom times of 2006, because there was such a demand for um, getting deals done, that some of those things kind of fell by the wayside. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're seeing a change, and I think you'll see some more syndicated loans going on this year, and I think it'll be driven by Asia. Um, but opportunities will abound everywhere, quite frankly. So I'm optimistic. Oh, Vijay? I think I'm a misfit here right now. <laughs> uh, no, we've never closed uh, our business. Our business structure uh, makes us lenders and borrowers. Um, sitting on the borrower's chair, we've, we've seen difficulties with the banks that we've dealt with, but unfortunately for us, uh, we were the least of their problems, so we got over our issues very quickly. Uh, sitting as a lender, um, we've, we've, all, we've been looking for projects since uh, October last, October 2008. Uh, in the end, it, it all comes down to counterparties and how counterparties are behaving. Um, the assets uh, and the types of ships really don't matter in the end. Uh, there is finance available. There is finance available for the good operators. Now, uh, if you look at smaller uh, regional fragmented ownership, you may probably not get finance in this market, unless you're talking to Nigel, that is. Uh, but otherwise, I think there is uh, there's enough uh, potential for the for the big owners. And if you saw the list that Marcus put up, the big owners have been getting money and at at pretty cheap prices. 
the cost of borrowing has not gone anywhere, is not different from what it was before, uh, because uh, the rise in margins has, uh, has been compensated by the drop in LIBOR. So overall costs have not changed, it's just that people need to repay their loans faster uh, and, uh, and